Hi everyone, welcome back to this additional session where I'll be giving a quick introduction into hyperparameter sweeping with weights and biases. So up until now, all of our hyperparameter choices were yeah, quite arbitrary. We did um, specify our network components, specify dropout weights, specify the unit that all the layers should have, but we did this quite arbitrarily. And hyperparameter sweeping is a way to yeah, organize and bring a bit of a system into finding out uh, the optimal hyperparameters. Um, optimal to which regards, we will see that later once we get this running here. But the main focus here should be on the technical details that you will need to set up hyperparameter sweeping with weights and biases. Weights and biases, or W and B, as you can see here, is a package available for Python from a third party um, company called Weights and Biases which provides you with everything that you would need in order to perform hyperparameter sweeping. However, you will need a login. So um, please make sure that you have set up this for wnb.ai. And then you can initialize your own hyperparameter sweeps. This will work the following way. As you're already used to, we will use Slurm and the Slurm controller that is running on our cluster, which means that we will um, yeah, schedule a job from the entry node, which will then be run on our gamma web node. And this job or process will run the training multiple times, each time with a different hyperparameter configuration. And then the results will be uploaded automatically, more or less, uh, to the wnb.ai website, where you can see this in an access restricted uh, part of the website. This is why you need this login. Another thing that is done or can be done using the web interface is actually controlling the sweeping. So you can control the range that those hyperparameters are sweeped over. And you can also yeah, specify the optimization um, variable. So for example, which loss or metric you want to optimize. What's also interesting about this is that you can apply clever hyperparameter sweeping, which means that you don't just randomize all the hyperparameter settings that you want to sweep over, but rather use something, um, yeah, or use, use a Bayesian method that will, in a kind of clever way, optimize the hyperparameters to um, yeah, improve um, a loss or metrics that you can specify. So let's dive in, let's start here. You can run this command again to simply start up the container that we built last time and um, enter interactive mode. And then you can type this command over here. It should be installed in the container that we built and it's interactive. So it will show you a website that you have to click on. And if you are signed in already on that website, you will be given a token and that one uh, has to be entered back in the console. And um, then you can exit this container and return back to the SSH entry gateway, which is the beta web here. So this will put your credentials into um, a file in your home directory. And this file is again already write protected. So if I type this over here, let me see if it works. Uh, apparently it doesn't. Okay, so it turns out I was locked in with an incorrect user. We did everything using this test account here. So I will also have to continue using this. But if you just type this in, then you should be able to see 
the file and that it has restrictive file permissions so no one can uh, spoof your token. That's good. And um, yeah, now I'm logged in after I did this, and this will enable us to use weights and biases. Okay, now there are some files that we have to set up. Um, you can find them in the zip file that I gave to you via the website, and I also have them here. So the first thing that we are going to do is uh, we adjust the training.py file. This is supposed to be a parameterized version of our training script that we already had. I also have that one open over here. And now let's observe the differences. And this is something that you will have to do every time you want to do hyperparameter sweeping, you have to transform your training script from this into that. And uh, yeah, let's see what's different here. So here we also import W and B, which gives us the abilities from weights and biases. The next change is that we introduce a function here, a function for the training, because for the hyperparameter sweeping, we will run this multiple times, not just once to train the network with one hyperparameter setting, but rather many, many times. So it's clever to use a function here, and the function will accept a few parameters that we will vary, uh, vary over. And um, yeah, let me quickly explain what they do. Use W and B is supposed to be a Boolean value indicating whether we actually want to use W and B or not. Dense layers is a list configuration of the units of the dense layers that we want to use. We'll see an example later. Input dropout rate is the dropout rate over the inputs of the network, so directly after the input layer. We can apply dropout here, but we can also simply leave this as zero. So you don't have any dropout and later in the hyperparameter sweeping, we will definitely test that what happens if we just take zero. The same goes for the dense dropout rate. Here we take one dropout parameter for all our dense layers that we can have here. We generate them with the loop and also the learning rate. Um, up until now, we mostly used, um, when we use Adam, we use the default learning rate, but here we will uh, vary this learning rate. Okay, the second, or actually third change that you will probably already have noticed now is that we replaced all hard-coded hyperparameters that you can see here with our parameters. So this is what parameterization means. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much what we did here with the parameterization. Another thing that we're doing here is we add another callback. And we want to use W and B to also gain more insights other than which hyperparameters result in the best loss or best metrics. We also want to observe the whole training curve. And in that regards, W and B is yeah, some kind of alternative to the classic tensor board that we already showed to you. But uh, we'll see that in the very end when we get a demonstration. OK, so we add this callback here. So if we want to use W and B, then we define this callback here pretty easy and just append it to our callbacks, which will be given to the model.fit function. And something else that you should already have noticed here is that um, yeah, we add uh, if name equals main section. This is called exclusively when we explicitly run the training.py, but never called when we import the training.py. So if we directly enter this training.py with a Python interpreter, this will be executed. And here we import some default hyperparameters. Let me quickly show to you how this looks. Uh, not this one, this one. 
These are our default hyperparameters. And this is pretty much what we have been doing previously. So dropout rate, um, 0.2, learning rate. This should also be the default learning rate that we implicitly defined here without giving any dense layers. We have one 128 and 164 over here, the same. Um, but here we don't use W and B as a default value. But using this technique, you can also just without using any W and B, simply run the training as you would normally. So we didn't lose any functionality here. Okay, this is what I mean by parameterize our training script. The next thing, and you already had a glimpse at this, is this sweep agent.py. So the terminology here is that with a sweep, you get one sweep server, which sets up all the hyperparameter and the hyperparameter ranges that you will be choosing from, or the server will be choosing from, and then set up many instances of the sweep agent, which will run typically one hyperparameter configuration at once. So if you have multiple in parallel, then everything is faster because this is of course um, parallelizable, uh, running multiple hyperparameter configurations. Okay, we import W and B here. Uh, we import this training function that we just had. And then we can see our default hyperparameters here, already explained it to you. And now we define this sweep agent function here and quickly explain what this does. This initialize um, a W and B hyperparameter sweep with a config. And this is, is important that you do this. Um, you give the config that you have here to W and B, because then you will be later able to see this in the web dashboard. You want to see which hyperparameters this was trained on. And typically, you don't sweep over all hyperparameters. You maybe just sweep over these two, I don't know. And then, um, yeah, the others, like these default values are still visible in the dashboard if you give them to W and B here. But then we kind of get them back. Why don't do we do that and don't just yeah use this again? Well, if we get um, this value back from W and from W and B, this will be actually changed. This will no longer be the default setting but will be the default setting altered um, by the sweep specifications. So for example, if the sweeps tells you, yeah, let's vary the dropout rate here and let's try a value of a 0 0.5, then this will be reflected in this hyperparameter dictionary. And this is exactly what I just explained. Okay, then we run another update on this dictionary. We set this use W and B to true because yeah, here we set it to false so everyone can train in peace without using W and B. But if we do sweeping, then we of course want to report to the web interface. So we do that here. And then we simply run the training on those hyperparameters that we just configured. This means that they get unpacked and loaded into these arguments here. Okay, this part again, if name equals main, is only called when you call the sweep agent explicitly. And what happens here is that we pass the argu arguments that this script is called with. And the argument that we specify here is the sweep ID, because typically you don't run a single sweep, you run multiple sweeps where you, I don't know, change the sweep configuration, change which variables get altered in which way, in which range. And this is all contained in a sweep with a certain ID that W and B assigns to it. And so we are supposed to give this to this script um, yeah, this is again argument parsing as you typically do this in Python. 
And then we execute this sweep agent function, but we don't call it directly. We rather have it called using wnb.agent because here we can directly give the sweep ID to wnb and wnb will take care to update the values inside this init function. So this function here has a side effect and this side effect is that wnb.init knows which sweep configuration to apply and which hyperparameters to choose for the current run. And here we specify the function, which is just our sweep agent, which should be executed. Okay, try to understand for a minute uh, what the architecture and the concept here is. You can also check out the WNB documentation. There are some guides there that also show you how to perform the hyperparameter sweeping. Probably a bit different, but here we optimized it to be running on Slurm. You can also, for example, submit the sweeps locally from your local machine and then just run this script over here with providing an argument of the sweep ID that also works. But here we want to do it a bit differently. We want to submit the whole sweep from our cluster. And for this, we need a second script. And this is the sweep server.py. And this is just a configuration of the ranges of variables that we want to uh, choose. And in the end, if we call this directly, this will give us or generate us a sweep ID from the given configuration and print the sweep ID. So we will be able to pipe it to our sweep agent script over here, and it will read it and it will work with it. So let's have a closer look at the sweep configuration. Here we give the sweep a name. This is useful again in the web dashboard where you can see multiple sweeps and this one will then stand out in particular. Here we specify the method and this is what I already mentioned. You don't have to do random sweeping or grid sweeping. You can simply type base. Then you need to specify the metric which you want to minimize, for example, which is the validation loss in the end. And then this base will um, yeah, slowly adjust and choose the hyperparameters in an improving matter. Let's, let's keep it that way. So let's have a look at the parameters. We specify to sweep the dense layers here. You can provide discrete values over that you will be sweeping. So this is one sweep configuration. This is another. This is another and so on. And remember, we take this list value and pass it over here into this variable. And then we will loop over the units. And yeah, for example, here we have three layers. And in the first layer, this will be the number of units. In the second layer, this will be the number of units. And in the third layer, this will be the number of units. This gets quite interesting because we can also use something like this, where we don't have any layers in between at all, which means that we, let me check it here, that we totally skip this loop here in this sweep configuration and from an input simply apply the last dense layer that maps everything to the 20 classes that we want to get and runs a soft map, map activation softmax activation. So we wouldn't expect it to work very well, but this is also common to test, right? Um, also as a kind of sanity check. Input dropout rate. Here we don't use discrete values, but um, where the continuous values from 0 to 0 0.5. Uh, so yeah, make sure to also keep the 0 in to check whether this works. And typically, you would use dropout to prevent overfitting on the training set. And this is also why it's important to not use the training loss here, but rather the validation loss. Then dropout rate, the same. For learning rate, it gets a bit more interesting because typically learning rate 
is um, applied on a logarithmic scale where you would have values from this value up until this value, but you wouldn't want to um, yeah, assign them linearly because this would, would give this one here a very, very, very small chance to happen. And all the values would probably center around uh, 0 0.05, and that this, this is not what we want here. But whether we do um, a logarithmic choice, and you can check the explanation out here if you want to go into detail. But um, yeah, interestingly, you would have to um, apply the logarithm yourself here, and then it would get transformed back to, to yeah, this value range by applying this log uniform. So it's a bit messy, a bit tricky, but yeah, just check this um, issue here where this is discussed, but it might also change in a future version. Okay, this is our sweep server. Make sure to also understand this. Uh, so here we sweep over four hyperparameters, which is yeah maybe a typical choice of number of hyperparameters to sweep over. We'll see that later, how we can isolate the results for certain hyperparameters and, and variables. Now let's have a look at this sweep server.sh. This is a script that calls up this sweep server.py. So in the end, this generates a sweep ID with this given configuration. This is what this part over here does. So this over here, you already know. Here we um, use the container image that we built already. This is used to mount your um, Ceph where your home directory is, but you wouldn't even need this at the current configuration that we did on the teaching cluster because uh, this is mounted by default, but I just left, left it here. So you can see how mounting stuff works. Export equals all allows you to export environment variables, which means that if you call this script with an environment variable, it will be passed over to this script that you call here. So you can use it inside. This over here is a bit tricky, but also important. Make sure to, uh, yeah, if you call the script to go into the directory where the script is, and set the Python path to this directory. So both the combination of both um, ideas or concepts will allow you to one reference relative Python files that you have in your project directory and also relative normal files, for example, configuration files or data files in your working directory. So this is why we do that. And yeah, Python 3, and then we just start the sweep server. This environment variable will be replaced simply with sweep server.py, but I wanted to take it um, as generic as possible here. Okay, I checked what this uh, piping mecha mechanic here does. So TEE splits the output, the output from S1 into yeah, two identical copies, basically. One is then passed into um, the standard error of the output. And the other part is passed into tail, which takes um, yeah, one uh, um, line, basically, that we output here, and then um, prints it again to standard out. And this means that if we use this script um, later at another location, um, at another position, then um, we will read everything that the script produces. Um, we get shown the output, for example, that it, it creates, but the script that will use the value, the output value that we explicitly want to use, which is the sweep ID, will just see the raw sweep ID that we generate here. You will see that in a minute, because this is the script. No, this is not. This is not the script. Uh, the last script. Ah, this is the script that we will 
uh, used to call this. So here you see this sweep server as H, but I'll come to that in a minute. Let's continue with the sweep agent.sh. And this is a so-called sbatch script. So you should already notice over here this section that looks like yeah, pointless comments because this is the comment um, prefix in, in bash scripts. But no, these properties here actually serve a purpose. And they tell sbatch, with, which is another command in Slurm, to um, yeah, apply these configuration parameters and then run this S1 command in the background. So without attaching to it, uh, which means that if you were to close the window when you run this in, then um, it would still continue in the background. That is, that is basically the deal with sbatch, but the configuration possibilities are much bigger than that. You can also um, force sbatch to, for example, um, run over all files in the directory and uh, do manipulations there or run everything 10 times, for example. But we will not do this using uh, this especial script here. So we assign this a job name again, which will be later shown in SQ. So make sure to um, assign uh, a sensible name. Then we again define the memory, but here we use a bit of a different command. We assign memory per GPU that we want to assign. But in the end, we just also want to assign a single GPU of those that we already did. But it's, it looks a bit different, but has the same effect. CPUs per task four. This is also a value that we can specify here, but this makes sense for our purposes. And nodes equals one defines that we want to run this whole thing on a single node. Well, there's just one available right now, Gamma Web 07, but that might change in the future. The output itself will be um, passed into this null device, which means it will be discarded because we don't really need all those lock prints that W and B produces because um, they will also be visible in the web interface. But what we want to have is the error output, the standard error produced by this command. And using this parameter here, we pass it into a new file. And this is um, a file we call slurm, slurm dash, and this is the job ID of the slurm job, dot r. So this is how we can debug the whole thing. Just look into this file after it ran, and you'll see the standard error. So what do we do here with this S1 command? Well, again, export all environment variables, container image, the same container as, as usually, container mounts again, um, which you wouldn't really need because it's mounted by default here, but in other contexts, you would need this. Um, what we do here is we assign a container name but we actually vary this name based on a command line argument. So this script will be given a command line argument, which will then tell the script the number of the instance that we are in. The reason is that we want to run multiple sweep agent in parallel. So um, yeah, we will, we will have to need, or we will need to have multiple containers or instances of containers so that each sweep agent gets one container on their own. The reason is that there can be issues with conflicting, for example, CUDA versions on different servers executing the same container instance because they share a file system. And we figured that this doesn't work always and it's very hard to debug. So the way to go here is yeah, by simply having it create a new container image instance from this file every time that uh, a sweep agent is triggered. This also means that manual installations that you might have done in a container instance with a fixed container name are not applicable here. Everything needs to be installed inside the image that we built using the Docker file and downloaded here. Here again, we, we use this 
bash C with our CD into the home directory and our Python path trick. This is quite important. And here we set some environment variables that will be used by W and B. So in W and B, you have two parameters or two, two um, directory names under which your sweep can be found. The first component is the entity, which is a bit comparable to your um, username um, or the first um, parameter that you would have in a GitHub project, for example. So github.com slash username or entity name, which could also be a team name slash and then the project. And this is the same here. So this will be the first component. This will be the second component. But we will simply configure this to be, let me ha have a quick glimpse here, to your new username of uh, WNP. This is the easiest way. But later, if you form groups, which will do projects, then it makes sense to have the group name here. You must reserve or register this actually with WNP and have the project name here. But I mean, you figured it out once you uh, use the dashboard for a while. We switch the console off. We don't want so many prints in our blocks. And then here we run Python 3 with the sweep agent script. This will be filled in with, let's see, sweep agent.py. And this is the script that we, um, yeah, that we have here which takes the sweep ID and then performs the sweep. And we also do this here. We provide it with the sweep ID. So later we will need to fill in this sweep ID parameter. And this is done using this over here. So this is the output of this script. Uh, let me get back. Yeah, this is the sweep agent.sh. We are still missing something else. And this is the sweep loop of sh. We decided to have this in a different uh, sh file. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Just run um, this sweep agent.sh multiple times. And each time you run it, um, yeah, take the loop parameter and um, pass it as an argument here. You can see the s batch command being used. And where does this dollar i end up? Well, it's just over here. So this is where the container names come from. And this is how to ensure that really only one container instance or a container instance is only used by one agent at the same time. OK, the next script is the one sweep.sh. And we already had multiple glimpses into this. So here you specify the server script, the sweep agent, um, your username twice, and the sweep ID, as I already explained, and the number of workers. So try to keep it uh, a bit low at the moment, maybe at two just for demonstrational purposes. But of course, later, if, if you want to deploy your software on a large cluster, then you can increase this. And yeah, this one, the sweep loop sh. So um, in the end, this, this seems a bit complicated, but you can also do this much uh, simpler if you don't use slurm. Uh, or if you use slurm, you can also do it a bit simpler if you just put everything in one script. But we did this here because uh, we are fiddling a bit with the container images and um, we found that this is quite an approachable way to do, and I would encourage or invite you to try this out and maybe share your results with us on Discord. Okay, the next step is to change the file permissions on all those sh files because you can only execute them if you give your user, if you give, which is the plus, your user the execution permission, and you can simply run this uh, in your home directory and it will apply itself to all those files. And then you run the sweep. So let me quickly um, check whether I did this permission change. Yes, as you can see here, those are those files that I put into my home directory. And here you can see that I have 
the execution permission. So now we can simply run the sweep. So this will take some time for multiple reasons. First, it will start up a container, which will then um, execute the sweep server, which will generate the sweep ID for us. And then all the agents will boot up using this sweep ID and get the instructions from uh, the W and B web um, interface in order to, to successfully run the sweep. So let's, let's wait for a minute. I will pause the recording and resume when this finish. Okay, so this was successful. Here it was generated as a sweep. And because we did this TEE trick, we can see um, this output here on our standard error output. Um, and here is our raw output, which is then passed into the sweep agents. And this created two jobs running at the same time. Let's have a look. We can see them here. This is the um, previous container, which has been used to set up the sweeps, finishing up. And um, yeah, here those sweeps will then begin to start running and produce sweep ones. And we can now see them on the web interface output. OK, some additional note here. So we are told that uh, we have a violation in our sweep configuration schema. And this is that uh, yeah, we use a log uniform uh, with the yeah, exponential values. This is exactly the problem that I told you about. Um, that this is yeah, unoptimal in, in the um, design of W and B, and they realized this. And to um, be backwards compatible, they decided to simply put out this warning and encourage the use of another argument, which is this one, where you would no longer require to uh, give, give values of lock of the values that you actually want, but rather give the values explicitly directly. So I would encourage you to try this at home and um, replace the, um, yeah, the learning rate uh, configuration that I did with a configuration using this over here. Please try this out and see if this will resolve this issue here, which is just a warning, uh, but, but yeah, please try this out. Okay, let's check out the results. If you follow the link that you were given or just navigate to your W and B home directory, then you will be seeing the sweeps configuration. And uh, if you click off on one of them, or if you just click the link that we were given in the terminal over here, then you will end up in this sweep dashboard. And please take your time to explore this dashboard and see what it has to offer. On one hand, you can see the sweep configurations over here. You can see the parameters that you specified. This is especially important if you change them later and um, do another run of this sweep, but with different parameters, then yeah, you still have them locked here. The, the, the most important section is probably this one over here with the sweep workspace, where you have an overview of all the runs that you've been training. Um, so each one of those lines is a run that has been going on, and you can see the different parameters here, so or the different metrics. So you have the loss metrics, the loss should be minimized in our example. And sometimes this works better, sometimes it works worse. Over here, you have the validation loss, and it should also be minimized. But you can also see that there's some kind of 
overfitting going on because oftentimes this validation loss is not as um, optimal as the losses. The same applies for the accuracy here. You can see and compare those accuracy values. And um, this is quite useful, especially because you can now restrict the parameter space. So what you can see here is a map of the parameter space. On each of those axes, you can see um, one hyperparameter and uh, the intersection between one line and yeah, this axis is uh, or indicates that this line that the one represents um, is using this specific hyperparameter setting. So I'm hovering over a specific line here, and this is uh, the sweep run, rich sweep one, two, four, a name that was automatically assigned. And you can now see that this line or this run uh, uses a dense drop off rate of 6.6, uh, of 0 0.66. Dense layers uh, didn't use any. This is why we're here at this position, and so on. And now, if we want to quickly check how good the dense layers are performing that use nothing, we can just, uh, let me check, crop out. It should be possible to crop out something here. Maybe this is because the screen resolution is a bit weird. Uh, da, 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 da. But you should be able to select something here. Maybe you can try it and maybe it works for you. Ah, here it works. OK, weird. Um, so here, for example, you can select specific ones that use a specific learning rate. And then you can see over here how those ones perform. And whether, for example, if you do it with the dropout rate, which is over here, if actually um, a low dropout rate, let's select it here, leads to um, overfitting, which you can see if there's a difference between validation accuracy and accuracy. So this is how you can play around with this. You can also select more advanced filters. Also, you'll see on the right here, we have the validation loss right now, but you can also change that to, for example, the validation accuracy. Let's have it here. Wait a second. Yeah, you can see it here, and you can also select the best ones over there, and then you can see a general um, tendency that uh, you should use these layer configurations over here. But in order to confirm this impression, this first impression, we can actually use this tool over here, which is parameter importance inspection. And if we want to, for example, optimize the validation loss, we select, select the validation loss here, but you could also do this on the accuracy. And then you click on this magic wand over here. Wait a second. And then you can see the calculation of which parameters are most important to achieve good validation losses. For example, the learning rate is very important and it should be very high in order to get, so this is what the correlation says, it should be higher in order to get um, good values. But yeah, I mean, you can also see good performing values here just by color. Uh, input dropout rate is also a bit important and uh, drawn, uh, dense dropout rate is not as important to the final results. This gets a bit messed up because um, we are using this Bayes optimization. So um, there's some kind of bias here uh, into which parameters are important. But yeah, just, just keep that in mind. But um, it's a great way to, to see how to improve um, and how to perform well. And if you want to select a specific setting, you can also then, like for example, OK, let's decide on using this, doesn't this? No, this still doesn't work. I don't know. Maybe because we're using discrete values. But let's imagine. Okay, we decide on using a learning rate. Um, ah, too many. That is 
in this area here. And let's decide that we use an input dropout rate of 0.15. And let's um, choose a dense dropout rate of uh, a bit under 0.4. Then you can see, OK, almost or really all runs had very good validation accuracy. So these are the parameters that one should choose in order uh, to achieve good results. This is how to yeah, inspect this and get good hyperparameters. You can also go a bit more into detail and view specific uh, sweep runs over here. So you get the charts and so on for a specific configuration. You can view that hyperparameter configuration if you click on this eye, and then uh, you can see everything here. Um, this is yeah quite quite useful. So um, you can expect inspect this every time uh, you want to inspect a certain sweep one that, for example, didn't work or didn't perform as expected. I think you should also be able to see system performance specifications. Uh, yes, you can see at least for one point in time the um, CPU utilization and the system memory utilization. So we could actually reduce the amount of uh, CPU and the amount of memory that we assign to this task. This is also something to consider, especially if resources are bound. And if you want to get back to the sweep, you can just click here and it will open the sweep again. But, uh, let, me see. let me see. Yeah. OK, and one important thing that I don't want to miss out on is how to actually stop the sweep. Because the sweeps are, let me check again. Yeah, they are still running and running indefinitely because we never specified um, an end. So there's this internal some configuration that we did, yes, which will terminate your jobs after 50 hours. But in this case, for example, we already have 130 runs. That is maybe enough for our problem here. Then you would typically start a new sweep with other parameters uh, with, or with the focus on other parameters. So how could you stop it? Well, you could just take these job IDs here and type S cancel, S cancel. 252 and 253, hit enter, and then it would cancel those sweeps. But maybe you want to finish the current run, and this can be done by using the sweep controls over here. Uh, ah, this is not the sweep that is actually running at the moment. This is something I pre prepared before, but we can also see the sweep that is running at the moment. Yeah, well, created 50 minutes ago. Com here you can see the compute time, which is combined over all the agents. We have two in our case. Um, and to, if we click on sweep controls here, we can see that we can actually pause the sweep to stop it temporarily from creating new ones. But keep in mind that this still has the resources, GPU resources and so on blocked. So don't use this one, just use the stop one which will finish up the currently running runs, still submit the results, and then have the agents die. Or if they take way too long, you can just cancel them, and this will uh, stop all or immediately cancel all running runs. So we we'll use stop here and wait a few uh, minutes until the current sweep ones are done. And then please confirm this by typing SQ again. So as you can see, they are still running. We'll take a second. And then you gracefully um, finished your very first hyperparameter sweeping. So again, please feel free to ask questions in, in Discord chat, for example. And I hope that many of you will be able to apply this, this hyperparameter co uh, sweeping concept later in your projects or even in your real life projects after, after this course. Okay, thank you for tuning in and see you in the next session.